Hey guys, welcome to my A-Level Maths Mastery course. So what we're going to be doing in this course and through this series of videos is going through some of the hardest possible questions that can turn up in each chapter of A-Level Maths. So today we're going through SUVA. Now again, these questions are found from similar exam boards, from university exams, from whatever, but essentially these are the hardest questions you can possibly get in A-Level and I'm going to focus on Edexcel Maths, okay? So as you can see, these are SUVA questions that we're gonna go through. Now, sometimes I may go through individual questions if they're really big. So if those of you on the Discord, I put a 14 marker logarithm question in there. Now, again, the idea behind this is that if you can do these problems and you can work through these problems, you get so good at maths that you'll be able to do the stuff that will appear on your exam. So this is how you can get an A star in A level maths. That's the whole idea of this. So again, they may be harder than what will actually appear. But the idea is if you focus on completing questions and working out answers to really, really hard problems, the stuff that's still hard is going to be easier for you. Think of it like lifting weights. If you have to lift, lift 60 kilos, then why don't you practice lifting 100 kilos? And eventually 60 is going to be really light for you. Anyways, without further ado, I'm going to go through exactly how you can get an A-star in A-level SUVA. So here we have Andrew hits a tennis ball vertically upwards towards his sister Barbara who's leaning out of a window seven and a half meters off the ground to try and catch it. When the ball leaves Andrew's racket, it is 1.9 meters above the ground and traveling at 21 meters per second. Barbara fails to catch it on the way up, but succeeds as the ball comes back down. Modeling the ball as a particle and assuming that air resistance can be neglected, find the maximum height above the ground which the ball reaches. Now, this is actually uh, deceptively a bit simple because you don't actually need all that much information for part A. Part A is actually not that bad. A lot of this information is redundant because if you think about it, it's just a normal, I throw a ball upwards, how high does it reach question? And we know how to solve that. And so the key part with A-level maths, but especially mechanics, is drawing out diagrams, okay? So if you think about the diagram for the first part, I don't actually care about his sister Barbara, because remember, we're just looking for the height, maximum height above the ground which the ball reaches. So if you think about it, we have a ball here, it's being projected upwards, and the speed, the initial speed is 21 meters per second. Now, of course, gravity is going to be acting to try and stop that at 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, and that's all the information we really need. Now, you might think, what about the 1.9 meters above the ground? Well, that is going to be very useful in this question because think about it. What we're gonna do is work out how high the ball gets and then we're gonna add 1.9 meters because it starts off 1.9 meters above the ground. The question does say max height above the ground. So now this is just a SUVAC question. Now, I'm going to take upwards as positive for this question. And again, the way I do SUVAC is I write out the variables in order, okay? So S, do we know what S is? No, we're trying to work it out. Again, we're gonna ignore the 1.9 and just add it to our answer to find the maximum height. U, well, U it tells me is 21. V, well, if it's the maximum height, we're going to work out how high it has traveled, how far upwards it's traveled, when it reaches zero velocity. Because the idea is, if you imagine the acceleration, it's gonna slow down this 21, it's gonna go down, 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 down. It's gonna hit zero, then it's gonna start coming back down. So the maximum height is when the velocity is zero because after that, it's gonna start falling again. Then we have A, which is of course negative 9.81 because remember, I'm taking upwards as positive. All of these values are vectors with the exception of time. And time we don't know, and I don't really care about it, because what's the equation I always use when I want S, U, A, and, um, sorry, and V, so S, U, V, and A? Well, with free fall, and this is a free fall question, we tend to use the equation S equals U, T plus half A, T squared. Um, but in this case, what we're going to be using is <clears throat> slightly different. We're going to be using B squared equals U squared plus 2AS, okay? So again, just keeping on your toes, which equation we're going to use, so B squared, equals u squared plus 2as. And this is quite useful because v is zero in this question. Now if I rearrange this for s, we get negative u squared over 2a, sub in the values, we have negative 21 all squared over two times minus 9.81. Now in terms of my value for gravity, I know some of you use different values. So sometimes 9.8, sometimes they say to use 10. The way you decide is that in the paper itself, it will tell you. This is actually an old spec question where you had to use uh, A as 9.81. But again, it's not gonna make much of a difference 
But in the question, it will tell you which value to use. So really don't worry about that. Or it'll tell you at the beginning of the paper, depending on uh, what exam board you're doing and what exam and what they decide to, to do for this year. But either way, you will know what value to use. So don't worry too much about it. And it tells me 22.5, let's do it to 3SF just to make it a bit easier for ourselves, 22.5 meters. So the max height, and again, you want to write this very explicitly, the max height equals 1.9 plus 22.5. Remember, the goal here is to make the examiner's life easy. I know you may not like them, but the easier their life is, the easier your life is. They can just give you marks without really thinking about it. And that is our final answer for part A. Now, if we look at the, let's read over the question one more time. So Andrew's hitting a tennis ball upwards and his sister is leaning out of a window. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna redraw our diagram. Again, we have this 1.9 meters that's initial. And then we have that Barbara is seven and a half meters above the ground. So if we go up here, let's say that our seven and a half meters, again, a straight ish line. And actually, wait, let me reread that again. Above the ground. So that's actually the, the total length out here. So from this point all the way to the ground is seven and a half meters. Um, when they try and catch it. So we still have the U being the exact same value. That doesn't change. In fact, I'm going to get rid of this because that's a bit confusing now. We have U is, is 21 meters per second. And we still, of course, have the acceleration downwards of 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, if we have a read of what it says, it says when the ball leaves Andrew's racket, it's on this. It's 1.9 meters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Barbara fails to catch the ball on its way up, but succeeds as the ball comes back down. Now, this does seem fairly tricky, but if we think about it, let's write out our variables, what we know. So first of all, uh, I'm going to take upwards as positive once more. Now S, we know what S is. If we're starting from the ground or from, from this height over here, we know that S is going to be 7.5 subtract 1.9. Because remember, in this case, we took S to be zero and then we added on the 1.9. So we need to take away the 1.9. Now let's think about why, let me go through it. Because down here, there is actually no acceleration, right? The acceleration actually changes, right? It starts off here and then it begins accelerating downwards. So we can't actually include that bit. So the actual uh, displacement we're looking for is when it's seven and a half meters above the ground. Now the way we can work that out is by doing 7.5 minus 1.9, which is going to be 5.6 meters. Because what we're effectively looking for is when the ball's gone up. So if I add that back in, it's gone up by 5.6 meters. Or, so the ball, if I draw the trajectory of the ball, it's gonna go up. She misses it on the way up, but then it comes back down and she catches it over here. So can you see the displacement will be 5.6 meters either way. She misses it the first time, catches it the second. Now, some of you may have already realized what equation we're going to use. We're going to use S is UT plus half AT squared. Now, because it's a quadratic, you're gonna have two times. One of them is when she misses it on the way up. The next one is when she catches it on the way back down. But that's when it's 5.6 meters above its starting position. It's displacement, remember. Hope that makes sense. U, yet again, is going to be 21. V, I'm going to put don't know for now. A is going to be negative uh, 9.81, and T is exactly what we're working out. So if I write out the equation S equals UT plus half AT squared, we actually have all of the information we need for this one. And then all we're gonna do is solve the quadratic, and that gives us our answer for six marks. 10 mark question in total, this didn't take me very long, and this is not gonna take me very long. So let's sub in, um, there's two ways you can do it. Since we know it's a quadratic, what we could do is move everything to one side. So we know it's gonna be half AT squared plus UT minus S equals zero. And then we can sub in our stuff. So we have a half uh, negative 9.81 T squared plus 21 T minus, um, minus S. I thought I said minus five for a second. I was very confused. Equals zero. So that should be an S. Let me write that out again because that does look a bit wonky. I did move the S to the other side. And what we can do now is basically just use our calculator to solve. So I've shown you how to do this before. Go down to equ equation slash func. 
Go to polynomial, because remember, we have a power greater than 1. Polynomial degree is 2. And the number in front is going to be a half. We can actually type in an equation, like this. And then when we press equals, it does it for us. So we can be extra lazy. And you know me, I love being lazy. And the negative 5.6, it gives us 2 times. Now, I like to do it to 3SF. So what we could do is do t is equal to 3.99 dot dot dot, which is equal to 4.00 seconds to 3SF. Or, technically it's and, not or. Um, but in, so I have had comments say, well, what, when do you write or, when do you write and? Well, technically it's and because there's two solutions. But in this case, um, what I'm trying to illustrate to the examiner is the time is either four seconds or a different value and I'm deciding which one. There isn't two answers to this specific question. Does that make sense? Um, then we're going to press equals one more time and it gives us 0 0.28 blah, 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 blah. So 0 0.285 dot, dot, dot. So to 3SF, it's 0 0.286 seconds to 3SF. So let me just put that on the screen for you, as you can see. Now it's a good idea to go a look back at what the question's actually asking because this isn't our answer yet and you're not just going to circle four seconds. Now, if we look at this, it says, find how long she has to wait from the moment the ball first passes her until she catches it. So we're basically working out the time between these two red marks. Now, when the ball gets to the first red mark, it's going to be 0 0.286 seconds, logically. And when it gets to the next one, it's going to be four seconds. So the time difference is going to be four 0 0.00 subtract 0 0.286 okay which is what 3.714 actually I don't know if that's right let me just double check that quickly um, but hopefully you can see the kind of logic there they word things in very difficult ways to make it a bit harder for you but it is normal okay uh, that is what they do but this is a set uh, a, in total a 10 mark question but in this particular part six marks and it's very little working out but can you see how the diagram is essential for this a lot of students when i teach them mechanics they read the question they go i have no idea what to do and the first thing i ask is have you drawn a diagram and they say no or they've drawn they've done a tiny one but they're like well i don't know what to draw and i said well read it and draw it out draw it as it goes along again i didn't know what i was going to do until i drew the diagram and saw what was happening and I wouldn't have got the right answer if I didn't draw the diagram because I wouldn't know that S was 5.6. So common mistakes would be doing this whole process but writing S is equal to 7.5 instead. And that would give you an answer. It would give you times. It's not a math error, but you wouldn't get the right answer. And that's kind of the key thing here. Mechanics is testing your application. It's testing can you draw out situations. And if any of you want to do kind of engineering, physics or anything like that, you're going to have to get good at doing this.